Hi guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to show you how you can make these books. Alright, so basically I'm using wood. Even though um, these books have pages in it that you buy in the store, mine won't have pages, but they'll look very similar to that when they're sitting on the shelf. So when they're sitting up there, you're not going to really see too much of a difference. Texture, a little bit. But if you want texture, that's okay. You can get texture just by taking something and putting it over top of it. Like, for instance, um, I'm using some scrap pieces of wood. And you can cut the wood with your 3-in-1 multi-cut tool or your little handsaw. Either one works. So we'll just start out with one with fabric over it. Okay, and I'm going to use a good bit of fabric, I mean, a good bit of hot glue. I'm just going to kind of put this down in there, press it in place. Then I'm going to fold the book nice and snug. And then cut that excess fabric off. Okay, now, once I've done that, I'm going to paint my edges real quick before I do anything else. All right, and I'm just using some white. You only need to paint the front facing edge and the top and bottom edge. You don't need to paint the back. And the reason I do this now as opposed to before I put the fabric on there is just so I have something to hold on to. Just got to be careful not to get it on the actual book. All right. So that's all you have to do for that. Let it dry. And then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so once you have that done and you've got your edges painted, you want to go ahead and take some hot glue. Some on the back edge there, and then some on the actual book itself. Pull it pretty snug so that you start seeing the glue come out of the end. And then there you have it. All right, now you want to take your book. You have two choices here. You can go right even with the wood, or you can have it raised up a little bit above it. It's completely up to you. For this one, I'm going to go a little bit above it so it looks like the pages are down in there. And then there you have a book. Now this one's a little bit taller than that, but you can do them shorter and have them the same size. Now if you want to make it exactly the same size, just measure your paint stir and stick and then take your 3-in-1 multi-cut tool and cut it just like that. It'll cut like butter. I mean it's like so, so easy to cut with the 3-in-1 multi-cut tool. Okay, and if you want to trim up your edge in case you didn't do it straight, you can just kind of take your little box knife and go down that edge and get up anymore. 
that was on there. But I kind of like it because it looks like it's pages. In fact, if you want to score it very carefully without cutting yourself, just lightly go down like that. You can give it a little bit of texture. I don't know if you can see that, but it actually is making lines in the wood. Kind of gives that added appearance of more pages but I mean I don't think the camera is picking it up there's that all right so I want to do the same thing with this one and I don't have the three-in-one multi-cut tool I can just kind of keep scoring it very carefully with my box knife just do it a couple of times and then take a pair of pliers and snap it off if you don't have the three-in-one multi-cut tool. It takes a little more effort, but you can still get the same job done. Okay. Now, basically all I did for these is I painted them white and green and then did a little green line on there to give it that effect. Now, if you want that textured look like we just did here on this book, but you don't have um, this kind of paper to do it with, you can use pretty much any kind of material and get a textured appearance. And then you can just paint it whatever color you want. Now this one, I did a little bit of puffy paint on the edges to give that added look of pages, but you can do whatever you like for the paint part. Make sure you get your edges done very, very good. That's the main part because that's the part that's going to keep your pages intact. Now this one I'm just cutting even with the book so you can kind of get an idea. And again, you can paint this green if you like, or you can keep it the color that it is. And if you want to put some bindings on there or some stitch marks, you can just use a Sharpie. And then there you have your little stitch marks. Doesn't necessarily need to be gold. Not every book has a gold mark at the back of the binding. But there's just a couple of ways that you can do a book. Um, and again, all I'm using is a paint stir and stick. Just a paint stir and stick is all you need. Now this is a little bit thicker than the ones you get at Home Depot came off of Amazon. I think Amazons were a little bit thicker, but not by much. Maybe by about a 16th or so. But just cut it with the three-in-one multi-cut tool or cut it on your little um, saw with your miter box. And then, you know, do the other steps. And then that's how you can make some quick books. Really quick, easy books. That you can use you can make them different sizes so they don't all blend in one row because I mean 
books, you don't necessarily want to have exactly the same size and have them uniform going all the way across. So let's just say I really like having my books and I want to have them in and out in different sizes on my bookshelf, but all my wood is exactly the same. So what you could do is, okay, so see how this one's really, really tall. Maybe I don't want this one as tall as that one. So I'm going to cut a little bit of it off. And then it's not going to be as short as the next one. And it's not going to be as tall as that one. Okay. And maybe I want this one to be a little bit thicker. So what I can do is I can take some extra fabric, extra material, whatever it is that I have that I'm using. And um, this here stuff works pretty good. This is like scraps off of a mini blind or Venetian blind, whatever you want to call them in your area. All right, so I'm going to do my binder with the binding part of my book. Push that down on there. And this one, I'm not going to do the pages in, just so you can kind of get an idea of what I mean by making the book thicker. Okay. Now, I have this little tiny part here, and I want my book thicker, right? But I don't have anything really to make this wood thicker. I can get some cardstock, and I can glue that to it. And I can do it in multiple layers to make that book thicker. So depending on how thick you want that book to be, you just keep adding that to it. And if you don't have wood or a way to do wood, you can just use cardstock as the center or poster board and use that as your pages as well. And I'll show you how to do that next. So real quick, I'll just go ahead and glue some of these together so you can kind of see what I mean by the thickness once it's done. Now I need to cut this off because it's too long for my pages. Okay, and then the top is also a little too long, so we're going to trim that up. Now you can do this prior to this if you like, so you don't have to do it while you're doing it. But it just takes a second either way. pressing down and then I'm going to fold and force it down. On a flat surface. Just like that. Trim up your pages. And then there you have a thicker book. All right, so I'm going to use an alcohol-based pen to give this a different color. And then there you have it. 
now to do the book with just the cardstock. Okay, so you have your cardstock. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my book and I'm going to trace it with a pencil. Looks like my husband was in my room again. I got to find a pencil. Hold on. Okay, I got one now. All right. So I'm going to trace it the height I want it. All right. And then I'm just going to cut straight along that line. And I'm going to do that a couple of times. And I'm just going to eyeball it because I don't care if the pages are uneven. I think it'll look more realistic if they are a little bit offset. It'll make each page stand out. So that's just my personal preference. Now, for the height of my book, we've already determined that. Now we need to cut the width of our pages. That should give us a good thickness right there. That should get right around the right amount that we need. Okay, so once I have that, then I need to decide what book page I'm going to do. And I think since we already did the other one, I think we'll go ahead and do this one. All right, you want to hold all of these together have one end where they're all even. Okay. Now you want to take your hot glue and just put that on there. Now I'm going to go just a tiny bit up from the bottom, just maybe a 30 second up. Peel off that glob that's right there. All the pages that were flat that you've forced flat should be adhered to this, so none should fall out. Okay, now you're just going to do the same thing and you're going to pretend this is the base of the book by gluing this. And you can glue your pages individually together if you like. Now you glue the other end. And then press. All right, once you have that pressed, you can take your book, cut the leftover material away. If any of your pages feel like they're coming apart or they're going to open up and you don't want it open, just glue it shut. Just totally glue it. So, like, I don't really like this page how it's opening up. I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue in there. 
and then you can do that to the next one and the next one or you can leave it as the page is open either way And then there you have another book. Only thing is, now this page opens. Now you can use regular paper and do this. It's just going to take a whole lot more. If you want to put your binding stripes, again, you can use a Sharpie or you can use like a erase pen, ink pen, anything like that. These are Spectrum pens they're really nice um you get lots and lots of stuff with them now for another way one more quick way you can do it is if you have foam board you get it at dollar tree or your office depot I'm trying to peel the paper off sorry for the noise should have did it prior but you can take the paper off or you can leave it on it's up to you I like taking the paper off because it melts the styrofoam underneath. And again, you're going to trace your book and then cut it out. Now this one I'm going to make a little bit longer. And this one I'm going to make hmm, just a teeny bit longer. And then this one I think I'll make narrower. Okay, so this is an easy, quick way to do it. Now there is paper on both sides. You don't have to take this paper off if you don't want to, but you can. All right, now we're going to do the same exact process that we just did. Only now we are going to be gluing it to the foam instead of the other stuff. Just going to bring it in just a little bit on each one. And this time, because it's foam and I don't want the foam to lose its shape, I'm going to trim it prior on the edges. Okay? forgot to do the binding area all right and then there's how that book is going to be I'm going to trim it but I'm not going directly next to the book I'm going a smidge over from the book like just a tiny bit maybe like a 30 second thickness And then there's that book. And your pages are already white. You don't have to paint anything. Now you want to do, let's say, a fabric book. We're going to start with the binding end at this time. Now, here's the tricky part when you're doing a fabric book. You need to fold your end in or it's going to look funny. So I'm going to trim up my whole book. And it may fray too. So you see how you have this end? You need to fold that over but then you run into the risk of it showing that way. So if you didn't make it long enough to where you can fold it completely back to the edge like that, which I didn't, then what you can do as a quick fix to that is you can make your fabric book still
pressing it down. Now, you see how you have that edge? Run a bead of glue across that edge. Just a nice little bead of glue. Let it cool. Okay, well that's cool and we're gonna go ahead and do this side. Okay, you want to do the same thing here. Okay, now while that side is cooling, we can take our scissors and cut this side. And because we glued it, it should not fray. See how it's fraying on the bottom? They have liquid stitch that you can use so that this doesn't happen, but hot glue works just as easy if you just touch it to it. And then there you have a fabric book. Okay, now say you have striped fabric or striped blind and then you don't want the book to look like this and you don't want it to look like that, but you want it to have a nice pattern, but you don't want it to be exactly the same as the one you did previously, you can do it on a bind like that. So what you need to do is do the edge of your binder with the back of the book on an angle. And I'm just using, this is a point of reference, and this is a point of reference for the corners. Okay? Now, so I don't have to keep fighting with this material since it's on a corner and it will be a pain to deal with. I'm just going to trim it up now. And hopefully I have enough left over that I didn't mess it up. All right, I'm going to put that down. And then I'm going to do the next one. Now, you can keep it just like this and cut it off, or if you want, you can do a little notebook binding. I'll show you what I mean by that with like a little book clip. And then you have the end cut like this. And then you would fold it over with a little loop in there and then glue it. And I like to keep it away, just a little bit away from the pages so that it has some contour to it. All right, and now so you can have a button or an edge to that, you want to outline that somehow. Okay, since I use gray, I'm going to go ahead and outline that edge just a little bit with this pink. 
and it just gives it a little bit of a contour. And again, this is just an alcohol based paint pen, well, marker pen. And the thing is, if this bleeds, it'll kind of look good because it'll blend into the book like it's supposed to be that way. And then there you have that. Now for the button, you can get yourself some puffy paint. And just put a dot there and it'll dry puffy. And then there's just another way to do a book. If you like this fabric, but you don't want to use it all um, as the same color, you can get the alcohol based pens again and you can just kind of color it in. Because it's going to bleed right through to the fabric. And we'll do one book once this dries. Okay, so that's with a pink. All right, this is a brown. The brown tends to look very aged. And that's kind of good, because you know, you can also go over and do darker areas with this. Kind of go back and hit a couple areas there. Watch it, it'll come off on your skin. Make sure you're working on a scrap board because it will bleed through or you'll hit the edge, one or the other. And you can seal this in with some Mod Podge. Once it's dry, it should be okay. But um, if you're worried about it coming off on anything, seal it with some Mod Podge, matte. You don't want the gloss, you want the matte, unless you want your book to be glossy. Okay, so there it is with that. And if I want that to have a darker look on it, I can always go back and hit it with a little bit of like the brown and a couple areas just to kind of give it a different look. Rather than being just blue. Okay, we'll let that dry. All right, while that's drying, we're gonna go ahead and do a white book. I went ahead and glued the spine already, so I'm sure you know how to do that by now. I'm gonna glue that over. Just like that. Trim that edge. And I'm gonna show you how to do that one more time. Only this time we're gonna do it just a tiny bit different.
see how this corner is like this and the other one we did kind of in a thing so this one we're just gonna kind of do like a half moon and it's bigger Press that down, let it sit there. Sorry, I had to take off my jacket because it was getting hot. Okay, so now you see how this comes way over here? Now, I don't want to have this um, outline too, too much like I did the other one. Okay, so I'm going to just do a very light blue, and I'm just rolling it around the edge. I'm not even touching the top. It's just going around the edge. And it will bleed through just enough to give it a hint. Another thing you can do is you can put some paint mixed with water and then you can do little droplets and let it run much like a tie-dye look would be. And then you have a little bit of a blue edge. Where there's glue, you might have to actually color. Okay, now you can just kind of raise that up a little bit. You can put something in there if it's easier for you, like, I don't know, maybe a toothpick, a skewer, to kind of keep that raised a little bit if it's easier. So now that's raised up. And as far as the button goes, again, you can use some puffy paint. I know I only have the white right here, but that's okay because once it dries, you can go over it with a marker and you can make it whatever color you want. Like, see, this has a white button, and it's already dry, and it's got, like, a little texture to it because it's puffy. If you don't have puffy paint, you can make your own by mixing some glue into some paint, or some paint into some glue, and then you have your own. All right, so that's pretty much it. Now we just need to do something with these, and then I think this will be enough once you see this because I think... You kind of got the idea of what I'm talking about when it comes to um, making a book. All right. So the last book we did on an angle like that, this one we're just going to kind of go, I guess, vertical since we did that one on an angle. Mm 
I'm going to put this right up here at this edge. And then you could probably get another book out of this. And then this one, we are not going to do the little adhered piece to the strap or the locking. My pages might be a little bit crooked there. There we go. That looks better. And there you have another book. Now remember, this and this is the same exact material. Okay, so here you have all your little store-bought books. You just kind of set them on the side so you can kind of see. And then here you have your homemade books. You know, everybody's got their own preference. Maybe you like the store-bought books. Maybe you want to make yours out of a block of wood. Or maybe you want to make yours out of the paper or the foam board. You know, pretty much anything goes with this. You can kind of do that one sideways, make like a notepad, that works. Thin piece of wood left over, make a notepad. So when you're getting ready to throw out some scraps of material or some old clothing, always look at it and think, is there anything that I could use that for in miniature? And then you will not have to buy it. Notepad for a desk. All right. So I'm going to do these two and show you real quick. Um, off camera and then I'll end this video for you. Okay, so these are all the exact same material. Started out like this and it ended like that. You can do that with pretty much any material you have. Just kind of color it with your alcohol-based pens or paint it with some watered down acrylic or something. Oh, and this is also the same material. So it started out with just the material there. We outlined it in pink. Then we did one in pink, one in blue and multicolored, one in gray, one with blue and multicolored again because we had extra. It just looks different. And then I also put an extra binding on the back of this one to give it like that extra te um, texture. And then there's that one. Now this one, I put the material on the inside where it was flat, but you still seen the lines, where this one is outside and you don't see the lines. Okay, so here is a white material that we outlined in blue, and we took that same material, and then we did the whole material with the blue. So you don't necessarily need to buy a whole lot of material to do your books. You can just kind of use whatever you have and just kind of manipulate it with markers. Permanent markers work, alcohol-based markers, 
you know, any of that. Okay, so here are the different books. And if you notice, they're all different heights and different um, thicknesses because that's what we made them, where you put them on a book shelf and, you know, now you have all these different ones. Now, this one doesn't want to stand up like that because it's meant to stand like this. But for showing you purposes, I'm trying to get to stand that way. They look all completely different. And if you want to use the wood, you can use the wood. This is also wood in the beginning over here. So I'm going to move this book over here. So you kind of get an idea. And then, you know, if you're standing them up on your desk, they've got different heights as well. Okay, so here they are on the secretary desk that my dad and I made a while back. And if you like this secretary desk, you can get it, the template off of my website, dollhousetutorials.com. But basically, you can see how the books are all different heights. And they're fairly easy to make. Now the secretary desk, you could put some inside. Right, where if you have the ones that you bought at the store, they are all exactly the same size. Very uniform. Nice little books, but they're all exactly the same size. Here's a picture of Dad when he was making the secretary desk with me and holding it all proud. Hopefully he's watching over us now and enjoying the videos as we make them. In the meantime, I will see you next time and like, subscribe, leave a question, suggestion, or comment below. And we will see you, or I will see you in the future, next video. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.